Greetings brothers and sisters. Um, today is the 10th of October. It's uh, it's about 20 to 10 in the evening. Perfect time for me to do a recording, nice and quiet. Um, here in our home, we're sitting in our lounge and um, just, uh, yeah, that's, uh, <clears throat> this is a recording that I've been mulling over in my mind whether I should do the recording or not, whether I should do this uh, teaching. I do believe it's correct. Um, it's something that I've been looking at for some time, and uh, it's really just come together in its in its completeness in the last couple of days. And it has a it has a, 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 a quite a big impact on on our understanding of um, the timing of things with regard to the coming of the Lord and the escape of the bride. So um, yeah, it's, it's it's something that. We, I would like to just present to you um, for consideration and if we see things happening a lot sooner than what we are currently anticipating we know, we know that the time of uh, tabernacles is coming up and in, in just two days we've got the uh, Feast of Atonement yeah, we've got things happening around the world in Israel that are looking like a p prophetic fulfillment of, of, of what we've been expecting with regards to the battle and the uh, between Israel and Iran, and the first attack um, that will probably happen. Um, we've had a look at it. We've understood in, uh, from scriptures that this uh, first attack should happen in line with the original um, biblical um, historic event of the first destruction of the temple, which happened on the. Uh, according to the scriptures, uh, uh, Jeremiah 52, he says the 10th of the first month, the temple was destroyed. In 2 Kings uh, 25, it records it as the 7th month. Uh, as a, uh, in, in 2 Kings 25, it uh, records it as the 7th day of the 5th month. Uh, what the reason is for those two different dates, uh, is uh, I can't tell you, but they clearly record, they both say the same thing. The temple was destroyed, and the house of the Lord was burnt, and the house of the house of the king was burnt. And but the one clearly says the seventh day of the fifth month, and the other one clearly says the tenth day. So I know that the the Jews have been celebrating, or, or, or not celebrating, but observing the ninth of the fifth month as a day of mourning uh, for a lot of the terrible things that really, a lot of the a lot of the bad things that have happened to Israel on that day. Um, I believe that uh, based on a, a biblical study of Exodus story that it's the day that they worship the golden calf. I believe it's the day that the bad report was given uh, by the ten uh, spies that went into the promised land. It's the day that the t uh, second temple was destroyed and many many other really not such good things have happened on that day on uh, around about that time ninth let's call it the ninth stroke tenth of the fifth month uh, that date on uh, the hebrew calendar has, has, has come and gone and it's um but it hasn't come and gone on on a version of of calendar where we understand that the beginning is not as the Jews currently have it, uh, starting in, in when the sun is in Pisces, but on a calendar where the year starts when the sun is in Taurus. So that's a two month difference. So I'm going to go into a couple of things on this video. As you've probably seen by the title, it's all about Ezekiel's uh, 390 days, um, the siege of Jerusalem, uh, followed by a 40 day um, siege which he enacted um, in, the, in, the, in the story of Ezekiel chapter 4, where the Lord got him to make a model of Jerusalem, and he enacted the besiege of, those, uh, of, of Jerusalem, uh, and he did that. So just before, in fact, exactly six years uh, before the destruction of the temple, that was, would have been the first temple um, in those days. So for a long time I've understood that 
Ezekiel 39 days and 40 days has something to do with end times. Um, I've understood that that I was fairly sure for, for some for some years now, and I've shared on it a couple of times in a study forum uh, uh, that I'm participant in um, at Ministry Revealed. And I made that connection of the 40 days in connected to the, the 40 day warning of Jonah that we learn about in uh, in Luke that's coming up. And it's a warning that Jesus will be bringing forth just before the final destruction of Jerusalem in these end times. If you want more detail, I'm not going to go into the detailed explanation of that. That would need to go to, to Ministry Revealed's uh, channel. And there are several videos that give great detail on that understanding. So we are sitting right now, we are on the, today's the Sabbath day, it's the eighth day of the seventh month on the Hebrew calendar. And uh, in two days' time, as I said, is uh, Feast of Atonement. And then five days from there would be the beginning of Tabernacles, which is a feast for seven days, uh, culminating with an eighth day, a very important day. So <clears throat> getting back to the Ezekiel connection. Uh, and when, when I saw that... Israel was there was a prominent count uh, with regards to their war since the 7th of uh, October 2023 when they had that really awful attack uh, from the Palestinians from Hamas uh, they started counting the the number of days of war and it's a very prominent count in in many media channels um, and it was about two months ago I thought hang on a second there's something to this count and, and it kind of really uh, I made the connection that there must be something connected to the 390 days and this count of, of, of Ezekiel, which we'll have a look at now. And uh, so the initial thinking was that the the count started on the 7th of October, which was that eighth day. That start, the 7th of October last year was the eighth day following the seven-day feast of uh, Tabernacles. And so it definitely was, well, uh, it was a marker. And so the thinking was that the count of 390 possibly comes from there, which will bring us to the warning for the house of Israel, as we will see now in the scriptures. It's about a warning for the house of Israel. And uh, But there's a couple of things with regards to that uh, uh, understanding that we, we're now looking at potentially the escape happening at the um, eighth day of uh, tabernacles. And then... After a seven-day wedding, the Jesus returning at the end of October, at the time of Halloween. Of course, that makes it very difficult to make the connection to the ninth stroke, tenth day of the fifth month, because the of the moon phases. Um, so the eighth day of the seventh month would be a. Uh, it would be after full moon. It would be a three-quarter moon, and. The beginning at the end of the, at the the end of the wedding and the return of, of Jesus for his forty day warning would be at a dark moon, and that doesn't quite match up with the original understanding where we we were looking at the ninth stroke tenth of the fifth month, which is just after the first quarter for the attack and the escape happening on that particular day, with um, with the with Jesus returning for his forty day warning. Uh, seven days later, which would be around about the 16th day of the fifth month, which is just after full moon. So, in this new count and new understanding, we were out of sync by about two weeks. The suggestion has been that maybe uh, the answer is that the true beginning of a month is when the moon is full, as opposed to when the moon is dark. Uh, we currently understand that the Jews' uh, calendar is based on Beginning of the month being when on that first sliver just after new, uh, the dark moon, let's call it dark moon, and they call that new moon. There are some that advocate that the full moon is actually the new moon, and the month starts on the full moon. So I've rejected that uh, understanding for several years now because Ezekiel, in about three places, clearly indicates, sorry, not Ezekiel, uh, because Enoch, the book of Enoch, 
clearly indicates that in a number of places, in about three places, three or four places, you can clearly see that he's describing the beginning of the month to be when the moon is dark and builds up to a full moon by the middle of the month and then it returns to dark by the end of the month and starts a new cycle again. So in the, from a scriptural argument, there's, there's been a number of people uh, and I'm going to say that the scriptures are not, cannot be, uh, are not well defined in that regard. There's, there's a strong argument for both cases, and I'm not going to go into the detail of that um, in this video, but just know that there is an argument. Uh, but Enoch clearly indicates that the dark moon, beginning of the month, is the dark moon. So either Enoch was wrong, or the book of Enoch was subse subsequently changed over the years and, and edited and altered. Uh, it's one of the two. Um, so, or is the book of Enoch is actually correct and the beginning of the month is the dark moon. And those are the three options you've got to choose from. I believe that um, Enoch is correct and it hasn't been altered uh, for two other reasons. The one reason is nowhere in God's creation do we see any of his creation going from a full bloom to nothing back to full bloom. Everything, but everything starts at nothing, goes to full bloom, and then goes back to nothing. We see that in, in nature, in flowers, in plants. We see that in our bodies. It goes from nothing to full, to back to, back to dust again. We see that in every single thing that is created, everything goes from nothing to full bloom to nothing. So I have a great difficulty uh, thinking that the Lord would have created the moon phases differently, uh, completely opposite to everything else in, that he created. That's the one thing. Second reason was, I believe he's a God of uh, logic. He's a God of grace. Um, and when he said uh, most of his feasts are at the middle of the month, uh, I think the, the only real exception is that's not very close, you know, uh, not at the middle of the month would be the Feast of Trumpets. It's a one-day feast. But the, the major feasts, uh, Passover, uh, Feast of Weeks is uh, close to the middle of the month, Tabernacles, um, Atonement, all of those uh, are very close to the middle of month, if not on the middle of month. Now we need to remember that in those days when, when people went out to uh, observe a feast, to observe an appointed day, uh, unlike today we've got uh, lights, we've got motor cars with lights on, we travel with, with all sorts of artificial lights, they had nothing of that sort. They would have had to travel in the dark. And the only way you can really travel in the dark when there's no other artificial lights is when the moon is shining or at least even when the moon is half shining there's enough light to be able to travel in the dark you can see you can see your hand in front of, in front of your face whereas uh, in those days with no moon you can virtually not see your hand in front of your face so i believe that the lord gave them a light to be able to get <clears throat> to the appointed time during their travels and that's why he would have given them a full light at the time when you brought them all together so that's the that's the logic aspect of it that's just something that we've lost in in this modern day society we don't understand now i live in the country and i know what it's like if if the if the, if the power is out you can't see your hand in front of your face at least you've got artificial light some means of creating light it's pitch black and, and there's no way you're going to be traveling anywhere when the moon unless the moon is shining when the moon is shining no problem you can get around without falling over your feet so um those are the two reasons over and above the Enoch that I believe strongly that in fact the beginning of the month is when the dark moon uh, at the dark moon um, developing to a full bloom by the middle of the month and then going back to a dark moon. That presents a problem in our understanding of the timing of things with, re with regards to the Ezekiel 39 uh, day count and the 40 day count. But I do believe 
I have a solution for that. And this is something that I've been looking at. And there's something that I discovered in, the, in this last week or so that I never saw before. I, I kind of, I had a, I saw it, but I couldn't find the solution for it, if I can put it that way. So I'm going to show you what, I, what, I, what I've discovered. And I'm going to show you how it relates to uh, the original. You must remember Ezekiel's 39 days and his 40 days related to a, to, uh, a 390 so Ezekiel's 390 and 40 day um, siege related to uh, a 390 year indignation on the part of the house of, of Israel and the 40 day uh, the, 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 the 40 day uh, siege uh, related to a 40 year id, indignation on, on the part of the house of Judah. Um, so it's so 40 days for 40 years indignation for Judah and 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 390 days for 390 years indignation on the part of the house of of Israel. So then those years actually existed. They were actual years uh, somewhere in the chronology uh, that actually happened that the Lord was re referring to. I believe in those days they understood what years they were, but we've lost sight of that. So. I've, had, I've been trying to understand where are those actual years that he was that are that are related to the 390 and the 40 in terms of what happened then. Of course, there's the 390 and the 40 in terms of what's coming as well that we need to have a look at and understand. Okay, so this video I want to get into uh, what I discovered with regards to that 390 and 40, and you would have seen by the title there's an extra six days that I never saw before. I saw the problem in the chronology. I had a six-year problem in the chronology. And I couldn't, I didn't know how to deal with it. And until recently, I, I, I did this exercise that I'm about to do now with you uh, from the scriptures. And I discovered there was actually an extra six days that's unaccounted for in that story, which I believe we need to account for. And when we do account for that, it has an influence on where we count the, 90, the 390 days from. I don't, I, at this point in time, I don't believe that the 390 and the 40 day count starts on the 7th of October last year. I believe it starts a little bit earlier, about 12 days earlier, in fact. So um, I'm going to get into that now. That's what this video is all about. It's a, it's a, it's a very technical video. Um, it's not for everybody. I make videos for a very, very small group of people, a group of people that are really getting into the word to try and understand the truth. Um, this is buff for sure, not for everybody, and I, I'm okay with that. Um, most people probably by this stage will have moved on. That's okay. There might be a handful of people that will see, uh, listen to this, uh, what I have to say right through, and I believe you'll be blessed uh, by what I have to show for you. I don't have, it's not a, an absolute, I'm not saying it's, this is a thus saith the Lord, I'm just going to show you what I'm seeing, and then we will see how things pan out in the reality over the next couple of days. Right, so so let me let me just get this out of the way. No need to see me anymore. Okay, so last the last video I made um, was this this one here where I was try, I made a video where we were trying to find the true fifth month uh, using Stellarium, and so I, I'm going to build a little bit on that. Um, clearly. In that video, there was a one small uh, section, I can't remember the exact timing, and I said there was a possibility. Uh, in terms of this video, we believe that the beginning of the year was uh, the 9th of May, and I said there's a possibility that the true beginning of the year was actually, is actually, this year, the true beginning of the year is actually um, in June, sometime, about the 8th or, of June, uh, in that vicinity. And, uh, but I, I didn't spend a lot of time on that. Um, if that is the case, if the true beginning of the year and the sun was still in Taurus in June, then we are right now on the eighth day of the fifth month from what we would call the Lord's calendar. So the Hebrew calendar is on the eighth day of the seventh month, but the Lord's calendar, which is Two, two months, uh, uh, there's a, uh, where the Jews are, the Jews calendar is two months ahead of time because they start the year when the sun is in Pisces as opposed to starting the year in, when the sun is in Taurus, which is a two month gap. They, uh, so where they are now on the eighth day of the seventh month, the Lord's calendar is on the eighth day of the fifth month now. 
I thought in this last video that we were last month, that we were still in the fifth month, but we were, it seems like we were still in the fourth month. And I believe that now we are actually in the true fifth month. And it's very interesting. You're going to see there's a, there's a correlation between the eighth and ninth day of the fifth month and the eighth and ninth, uh, well, let's, uh, sorry, let's call it the ninth day, ninth, tenth day of the, of the fifth month, which is the de temple destruction somewhere around the ninth, tenth, according to Jeremiah 52. And, and the ninth, so tenth day of the seventh month on the Jews calendar. And you're going to see there's an interesting connection between those two, uh, those two calendars on that specific day. Okay, so we will touch on to that a little bit. Um, so that's really just building on, on from there. There was an area and we were still a month too early, I believe. And that's what we're going to have a look at now. Okay, but before we get into that, I want to just get into Ezekiel. Um, okay, so... Let's go to chapter one. So the in the beginning um, of of Ezekiel's uh, um, record, he gets he gets to see a vision. Uh, this was when he when he started prophesying that he was about he was thirty years of age at this point. I can show you on the chronology. We'll have a look at that now. He had just turned thirty, and he received this vision, and it was and he recorded it that it was on the fifth day of uh, of the um it was the fifth day of the of the fourth month so the fourth month in the fifth day uh he recorded it it happened to be the fifth year of uh, king jehoiakim's captivity which was also his own captivity in other words ezekiel went into captivity when king jehoiakim went into captivity and this was in the fifth year of captivity and it was the 13th year since the, since Daniel went into captivity, basically, since the whole thing started in, in, the, in the captivity and the 13th year of Nebuchadnezzar. So uh, that's just where those two, two years fit in. But the important thing here was the, the, the fifth day of the fourth month when he, when he gets to see this vision. And, and I'm not going to read through this, but you can, he, sees, um, he describes an amazing vision here. And what, I, what seems to be some sort of mobile uh, uh, throne. Uh, that the Lord comes on, and he and he gets to see that. Okay, and he describes that in full. So, and then in the next chapter, this is now where Ezekiel is called, and he is now called uh, to be a watchman. And he sends his, uh, the Lord says he's going to send him to the children of Israel, a rebellious nation. And we get to see here that it, whether they hear, whether they hear, whether they, whether they hear is mentioned over and over again. So this is clearly linked to, you know, in Revelations where Jesus said to the seven churches, uh, those that have an ear to hear. Uh, so whether they hear, or whether they don't hear, uh, Ezekiel had a message to deliver. Whether they want to hear it or not, that's up to them. And he later on he appoints him as a watchman. And he says, uh, and he, and he it's, it's basically, if he, if he warns them and they listen, great. If, if he warns them and they don't listen, then their blood is on their own hands. If he doesn't warn them, <laughs> then their blood is on his hands. So he was compelled to, to, to warn them. Okay. Uh, Ezekiel gets to get a scroll, similar, gets a scroll to eat, uh, which is similar to what John uh, in, in the book of Revelation got to eat, uh, had to eat a scroll, a book, a, the little book. And this is about being given uh, a whole lot of information. Okay, that's what it's really all about. He's given information and uh, revelation, and that's what this eating the scroll is all about. Then we will see here, and I'm just going to point out a couple of things in the story. <clears throat> we will see that it's the house of Israel is mentioned a lot through the through this entire book. In fact, I think it's about eighty-four times that the house of Israel is mentioned. Uh, and about eight times that the house of Judah is mentioned. Now, the interesting thing is, in the beginning, we got house of Israel, house of Israel, all the way up to chapter, uh, and in some cases, so it's mainly the house of Israel and, and a little bit of house of Judah until chapter 37, where you got this, um, where, they will, where God shall, uh, where he brings them together. And he had these, he had to make, uh, Ezekiel had to make these two, hold these two sticks. Uh, he said, uh, so make thee a stick and write upon it for Judah, the children uh, of Israel, his, 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 and, he, and his companions. So this is one group. 
and the other stick he had to write on Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and all the house of Israel and his companions. So there was two sticks, the house of Judah and the house of Israel, the two different sticks. So this is clearly referring to the, the house of Israel is clearly the ten tribes, the lost tribes. Uh, and it's interesting, but the t by the time that Ezekiel received this uh, vision and, the, and where he was made this watchman, the house of Israel was actually long dispersed, uh, several years already. Uh, we'll have a look on the, on the chronology. But the house of Judah was still in their land. But the Lord still refers to them as a, as a people, even though they were scattered, He still refers to them as people, and they were stiff-necked people, and they wouldn't listen. And very interesting, so much so that it makes it very clear that the Lord is speaking to the house of Israel and house of Judah, even though they were, in a, they were, they were gone. This is for the, because it was, it was mainly for the end times. Yes, it was for, for them as a warning at that time. When Ezekiel was enacting this thing, it was a warning for, 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 the, for the house of Judah uh, at that time uh, as to what was coming up in terms of the, the siege of Jerusalem and the ultimate destruction of Jerusalem. But actually, this whole thing is, when you, when you read it and you understand, this was much more about end times than for, 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 for when, when it was actually received by Ezekiel. In any case, after 37, where he brings them together and he says, uh, um, uh, he, he describes that they will, they, will, uh, they, they will become one in his hand, join them uh, one to another in, in, in one stick and they shall become one in the hand. From this point onwards, from chapter 37 onwards, the house of Judah is not never mentioned again. And it continues mentioning the house of Israel and the house of Israel and the house of Israel. So I believe that everything that refers, everything from chapters 1 to 37 or 1 to 36, where it talks about the house of Israel, is referring to the, the, the ten tribes that were dispersed amongst the nations, still are dispersed amongst the nations, and where the Gentiles are grafted into them, and they are grafted in, those that, that, are, that are born again, those are saved. So the house of Israel is that group, uh, together with the Gentiles that are gr grouped in. And the house of Judah is clearly the group that's currently living, largely the, the group that's currently living, living in the land of Israel. Those would be the two groups to read Ezekiel uh, uh, from an end time perspective. And then, of course, we know that um, chapter 38 and 39 is, is where, um, is where, this is where, uh, this, 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 this chapter is uh, the end of, of seals um, and the beginning uh, uh, brings us into the beginning of trumpets. So the, the end of the first year is, the first seven years um, ends at, the, at this uh, this time, and then we go into the um, the, the final seven years for for um, for the time of trumpets. So it's interesting that it seems like the Lord is bringing the two houses together just at the end of seals. He actually brings them together. So going into trumpets, probably the the the, the remnant that are not raptured, those that are that don't make it for the for the rapture at the end of seals. Um, might actually be grafted into the house of Judah, and then he refers to them as the house of Israel in, in Ezekiel going forward. So that's just something to look at. Um, I don't want to get to spend too much time on that, but my main focus is this modeling this um, in chapter 4, the description of the siege of Jerusalem, and he, he, he gets to, he has to make a tile, and he uh, portrays the city of Jerusalem on it. It's kind of like you know when they in, when you, they have war games and they make a they make a sand model of their of the area, the war area and they would make their plans the war plans around that around that model. Uh, we've seen that in, depicted in many uh, war stories where they they do war plans around the model of the of the battle battlefield, and this is no different. Um, this is exactly what it was. It was a model of the battlefield and. Uh, what uh, the Lord was saying is that um, put an iron pan between you and Jerusalem and you had to um, lie in, in front of this model and uh, it was depicted as a siege of Jerusalem and I believe this iron pan, iron pan is di uh, direct refle reference to, the Isra to Israel's iron dome. Uh, th that in spite of the iron, th this, uh, in spite of this iron pan between Jerusalem and Ezekiel, uh, Ezekiel is now representing the Lord, um, and their their iron iron dome is 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 not going to prevent the siege. It's not going to prevent the ultimate uh, destruction, 
that's coming and uh, so that's what that's uh, depicting so then he had to lie on his left side uh, for the iniquity of the house of Israel and he had to do that for a number of 390 days so three for uh, the years for their iniquity according to the number of days 390 days and so it was 390 days thou shalt eat thereof so, uh, so it was all about the seat for the iniquity of Jerusalem relating to 390 years and um, and it was uh, it was played out for 390 days we will have a look at this 390 in the chronology to see where the actual 390 years were okay and then when they when he accomplished those 390 then he had to uh, lie on his uh, right side and he would then would be the iniquity of the house of judah for 40 days um, so this was the 40 years brought um, uh, represented f as 40 days after the 390 okay um, and we will see that in the chronology as well those 40 years uh, where i believe it uh, what it was referring to okay the interesting okay then he uh, then he would he was he would uh, thou shall not turn uh, the from one side to another until thou has ended the days of the siege. So uh, I don't know if I, I wanted to. Yeah, this. So it, basically, this had to be completed um, until it was until uh, until the. This is the, you know. Uh, I think we can see this as the the the, the three hundred ninety and the forty days represented a, a siege. And uh, that, that would, this, this whole enactment wouldn't end until the siege uh, comes to an end. Okay. Um, we see here, we, we, we know that, I do believe uh, that we're currently in the dung year uh, that was referred to uh, by the Lord Jesus in, 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 uh, in terms of his parable of the dung year where uh, the tree was, was to be taken down, the unfruitful tree referring to Israel. And uh, the husband says, well, let me give me just one more year and I'll dung it and see if it produces fruit. And if not, then we'll chop it down. And this is the dung year, I believe, that actually has been happening since not necessarily October the 7th last year, uh, uh, but approximately from that time. So anyway, from that time, we've seen that they've been on dung year and we've, uh, uh, it does seem to be the case. Uh, however, I don't believe it's actually from the end of tabernacles. <laughs> That the dung year started. I'll get into that now. Okay, um, and so we see this uh, that Ezekiel had to prepare his food uh, using um, dung cakes. Uh, so instead of firewood, he had to use dung cakes for the for the prepar preparation of his food. And I think that's what it's really uh, uh, pointing to that uh, this 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 particular dung year that we're going through right now, and it's the 390 years and uh, three, uh, 390 days and the 40 days, which is the dung year. <laughs> so, uh, so we're going to get into that. Okay, then um, it's also a time of ast astonishment that they will eat their bread uh, with astonishment, uh, with uh, by by measure. Um, so this is not going to be a time of, of freedom, a time of celebration, a time of easy going. This is going to be a time of uh, they're going to be on their toes. They're going to be uh, be counting their blessings every single day because of uh, during this dunya. Okay, that's what I believe that is all about. Um, not to get then. He says, okay, then it will be destroyed. Um, and then he goes into describing how that um, Ezekiel had to shave his hair off and then a third part of his hair, he had to burn it. And a third part of it, uh, uh, he had to... Uh, uh, let me just get into this. Uh, the, um, so he shaved off there. Thou shalt burn with fire the third part in the midst of the city. Then... When the days of the siege are fulfilled, so, so, if, when the days of the siege of 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 siege are fulfilled, so the end of the three ninety and the forty, a third part of of the hair which represents the people in this instance of the city would be burnt. Uh, this speaks of famine. It's not we're not talking about actual fire being burnt in the fire. We're talking about famine, pestilence, hardship, uh, uh, that type of thing, dying of salvation, etc. Then a third part was be smart with a knife that's uh, that's 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 killed with um, uh, um, yeah so that that would be uh, slaughtered and then a third part you will scatter 
Um, so, so this, this, these guys are not actually killed, but they're scattered. But this, they are basically chased out of there. They, there's a sword after them. It's not just going to be a, 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 a nice stroll out of this situation. They're literally going to be running for their lives. So those are the third, third, third. Um, now, the interesting is uh, that this is um, uh, this is all referring still, in my view, to to the house of Israel. Now, we, the house of Israel is not actually in the land of Israel. We'll see here that this whole thing is repeated again, but this time in the land of Israel. So this is all these things. You know, we keep on looking at as Israel and a third and, and, and how bad it's going to be for the Israel. But the Lord is actually telling you, the house of uh, Israel, uh, the house of Judah is going to get it. But the house of Israel is also going to get it. And that's what we're seeing here. This is going to be a worldwide thing because the house of Israel is scattered through all the nations. So we're going to see a third of the, a third of the of the people burnt, a third of the people sm uh, killed with a sword, uh, you know, with a knife and firearms and all that, and and a third of them will be running to uh, into the country and to to escape all uh, what's coming. Um, and the interesting thing is, then he had to take a few, and then he said, oh, "They shall take thereof a few in number." So a few of these hairs, and he will bind them in his skirt. So it's like protecting them. He hidden them in his skirts. Okay, that's that's like speaking of a of a small group of people that will be hidden in his skirts. Hidden in, in uh, uh, you know, from, from all of these things. But they, he, he was to take of them again, a part of this uh, small number that he was protecting, take a small part of them and cast them in, the, in amidst the fire and burn them with fire. So we're not, it's not throwing them literally into the fire. In other words, they're going to be, the, the small number, and they're going to, they're actually going to participate in this, uh, in, uh, in, this fam, in this famine and the pestilence and the hardship. Okay? And uh, and because of of that, there there uh, there shall come a fire forth um, in, into in, into all of the house of Israel. You see, this is all talking about the house of Israel still, okay. And then he starts talking about Jerusalem, and he says, I, "I've sent in the midst of uh, so Jerusalem. I've sent in the midst of the, set. Sorry, Jerusalem. I've set in the midst of the nations and countries. Uh, I'm just I'm not going to read everything here. I just want to highlight some of the things." Um, uh, I will, I will do in thee that which I have not done, there uh, uh, there I will not do any more like, because of all thy abominations. Um, it goes on to say, the whole remnant of thee will I scatter. Um, and then uh, he, he says, because and he, he says because they had defiled his sanctuary. Um, so. Um, I believe this is talking about the sanctuary of the body in this point in time, in this end time understanding. Israel was, was one of the, the um, most thorough in, in, in getting their vaccinations done. I believe that's exactly what it's saying. They really pushed it um, and uh, they, it was a very high percentage of vaccination rate in, in Israel. And anyway, then he goes on to say, um, and a third part of thee shall die with pestilence. And with famine, and they shall be, and they'll be consumed in the midst of thee. So there's your pestilence and famine. That's linked to this burning with fire, and a third part shall fall by the sword. That's the killing. Okay, it's the same as this group, but this goes now to the house of Judah, and I will scatter a third body into the winds, and and send a sword of them. So you see how it's repeated twice. This is for the house of Israel. This is for the house of Judah, and again there will be astonishment uh, unto all the nations. So that's. That's the actual destruction that's coming, but this warning of 3, 390 and the 40 is before all of this, okay? He's just telling, saying to them what's, what's coming. Um, then he goes on to repeat again, now we, we had, there we had Jerusalem, so here he's speaking about Jerusalem specifically. Um, and then in the next chapter he starts speaking about the greater area around, Jeris, uh, around Jerusalem, the mountains of Israel. And the same thing here. Um, so there will be a remnant and they... The, the, um, they're four by, by the sword and by famine and by pestilence. So there you see the same same thing is going to happen through. So in Jerusalem, the surrounding area of Israel, and of course the uh, uh, the house of uh, that's for Judah, and then of course the house of Israel around the world. So I think we're going to see these things on a far greater scale. That's what the warning was all about. Uh, yeah, we see the day of wrath for the land of Israel. The end is come uh, for the four corners of the land. He's all talking about the land. Blow the trumpet. Uh, they've blown the trumpet and uh, even to make ready, but no one goes to battle, so it's after feast the trumpets. Um, but they that escape uh, of them shall escape, and 
shall be on the mountains of dove, dove, like doves of the valley, uh, all of them mourning everyone uh, for his iniquity. So they'll, they shall be feeble and all knees shall be weakened uh, as water. So this is again linked to that. Uh, um, these are the few survivors that, that will be uh, uh, weeping and mourning. Uh, very similar to the uh, description in Isaiah 66. Uh, and, uh, where before she travailed, um, the pain arrived, and uh, they were f they were also weak, need and feeble in in that particular event there. So uh, there's definitely a link to that as well. Um, so and then chapter eight is the. Um, we're getting to the end now. We've got two dates, and this is what I really want to do. This is now the second date that we're given in, in the story, and he comes to the end now. This is clearly at the end of, oh, this is now after the 390 and the 40-day enactment that he did, and he's now in his house, and, he's, and, it's, and he records it as being in the sixth year, so that he started in the fifth year of his captivity, and now this is the following year, in the sixth year of his captivity, in the sixth month, and it's the fifth day of the sixth month. So he started off in the, the fifth day of the fourth month, a year before, and now a year later in the fifth day of the sixth month, he's now completed with that enactment. He's sitting in his house with the elders of Judah uh, that sat before him. And then the Lord um, takes him on a vision. He takes him on a trip and he shows him uh, the iniquity that abounds. And you can go and read this iniquity, and it's clearly all the things that are happening even in this modern day time. So uh, I'm not going to spend that, but it's filled with violence. The house of Judah has filled the land with violence, uh, and um, so he will, he's not going to spare them for that reason. And so he's, the warning is finished now, and he's showing them what, the, what is the situation in the land and, and their idolatry and the idol worship and all those kind of things. Um, so... And then we have the, this, uh, the whole story of where the, the, uh, the idolaters are killed. Both, uh, uh, he said to me, the iniquity of the house of Israel and the house of Jesus is exceedingly great. So this is applicable to both, both parties. Um, so this is what actually takes, takes place. Um, and then, of course, he um, goes on to describe these, the glory of the Lord leaving the temple. Um, and it, it goes on. I think that's, uh, I'm not going to go into any further into the, the storyline. There's a lot of detail that describes, you can, you can go read this with the end time understanding that this is all pointing to what's going to happen. Um, and you will see what, uh, it gives a nice, nice uh, a bit of detail of what we can expect in these next, uh, in the time of tribulation, both good and bad, um, what the Lord's going to do. So this is where I want to now I want to bring this into line with um, the chronology. So, those of you who don't have not heard of the biblical chronology, uh, the, we do have a a chronology exclusively based on the Bible. Um, gives us Bible gives us enough information to put a chronological order complete, one hundred percent complete, to know every event, what year it happened, all the way from Adam up to the end of Nehemiah, uh, which which was just after the second temple was complete, and 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 uh, and then we've got then the chronology, of biblical chronology ends in terms of detail, but there's a bridge that uh, 490 year bridge that brings us to the uh, baptism of Jesus Christ in the year 29 AD. So we've got that bridge and then we can complete the chronology from there from 29 AD to our modern day. So we actually have a complete chronology all the way from Adam to the modern day based exclusively on the Bible. It wasn't discovered by me. Uh, it was discovered by a guy by the name of Martin, Reverend Martin Anstey. And there were a number of other people that worked on it over the years, but they never, they never got to complete it. They never got it 100% right. In fact, they, even in, in Anstey's one, there's one or two things that I think he got wrong. I think we've got them pretty much straightened out now. So if, if I could say that I could have added anything, it would be just straightening out a few little crinkles here and there where I think he got it wrong because of the influence of the Catholic Church at that time when he discovered it. 
Nevertheless, if you want to understand the biblical chronology and the beauty of it uh, that's in our Bible, uh, then I would suggest you watch these four parts, parts one, one to four of the Romance or Bible Chronology, which was the name of the book that Martin, Reverend Martin Anstey wrote in 1913. So it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, just over 100, and, it's about 110 years ago where this, this chronology was discovered. So what I've taken is what Martin did was he put a table together and I brought it together into an Excel format. So we've got, uh, an Excel version of the chronology and means that now we can go and pick up on, on, on these, these events uh, from a chrono chronological perspective. So we see here, yes, um, Ezekiel, let me just move this over a little bit. Here's the story of Ezekiel, the 39. This was Ezekiel uh, uh, chapter 1, verse 1. Um, and this is where the the date is given to us in the fifth year of their captivity okay there's the fifth year of their captivity ezekiel's captivity started there and they were in the fifth year of their captivity and it was in the 13th year of daniel this is where daniel went into captivity and the 13th year of um of daniel so, so the, those are the two years given and then we are given the extra detail here that it was in the fifth day of the fourth month so this is when Ezekiel was given that vision in this particular year. Um, so what Martin Anstey uh, believed, the 390 years of iniquity on the part of the house of Israel, he believed that it, the 390 years started when, it, when Israel split into two nations. And it's exactly... To this year, where uh, this was the 390th year, if you go, if you count from uh, from when they split, um, this was where they split the year that they split, where um, Rehoboam and and uh, uh, Jeroboam, they the house of Judah and the house of Israel, where they became two, and if you count from there. It, it's exactly 390 years to the year when Ezekiel received this vision. So Martin Anstey suggested that that was the 390 years of iniquity on the part of the house of Israel, which is plausible, and I think it's, it's, it could well be the case. But I have another suggestion, and I'll get to that now. In terms of the 40 years of the house of, uh, of, of Judah, that one, Martin Anstey suggested that it was related to the time that Jeremiah was prophesying. So we know that Jeremiah started prophesying based on scripture. Um, he started prophesying in this year here, okay, which would have been uh, from a Gregorian perspective, 544 BC or uh, 3499th year since um, Adam, and that he actually started, he began to prophesy in this year. So if you count 40 years from there, um, to, so this is the count here, Jeremiah's prophecy, we count to the end of 40, and then the very next year is the, the year that the, the temple was destroyed. In this, in this year, yeah. The, the way the temple was destroyed in this year. So the 40 is complete, and then the destruction. But you will see that there's an overlap. Um, now I just want to show you where I had some uh, difficulty. So there's an overlap. So this uh, 40 started, um, well, in the, in the previous page, started in the 357th year, uh, of the 390 years, it started the 40. Okay. And there's 358, and there's the second, and those two go together. Those two columns go together. There, the 390 stops in the year that Ezekiel received it, but the 40 carries on. So there's six more years. That's one, two, three, four, five, six more years. Uh, 
and then the temple is destroyed uh, to complete the 40. But so we have this situation here, which I never understood, and this is what was bothering me. We had these six years here, uh, where a gap of six years from the 3 390 in this perspective, and the other thing that I had a problem was, was there's this overlap and the story is not, there's no overlap in the story. And so I wasn't um, too sure whether we're supposed to have a full, uh, uh, you know, why is the partial overlap? Is that correct? And I even looked at the possibility of a, of a 40 year running where the 40 years ends together with the 390. In other words, they both run uh, sequentially um, and end together. And I couldn't find anything ob uh, you know, obvious. There, were, there was one one count that kind of fitted uh, uh, from when Joshua uh, started cleaning up uh, uh, Jerusalem, and he he, he started um, getting rid of all the idols and cleaning up, uh, and then uh, that was a possibility. It, it kind of worked, but I think it just didn't quite come together okay so I uh, this this 40 this 40 years I believe is correct um, I don't I, I don't I think that it's actually exactly right the house of Judah was in a was in was a disobedient from when Jeremiah started prophesying and warning them and they completely ignored his warnings for 40 years that I believe is totally the years of indignation on the part of the house of Judah from when Jeremiah started till the temple was destroyed. Those are the 40 years of the indignation of, of Judah. I believe wholeheartedly that is exactly right, okay, in terms of the wars. I believe that there's a possibility that the 390-year count doesn't start when, the, when Israel split into two, but actually starts when Solomon took over from David. Um, because if we go to account where Solomon, I'm just going to go to where Solomon, uh, it's on this one, yeah. So I've got this count in here. Uh, sorry, that's too far. So Solomon comes in. So David re reigned 40 years, and then Solomon came in. And I do believe that is the point in time. I, I just, uh, um, I believe that th that's when it, the house of Israel's trouble actually started after David. And if we if we do count that, and if we just accept for a moment that that is the beginning of the 390, as opposed to 40 years later, after Solomon reigned 40 years, so and then it's after his 40 years, they split. So there's a 40-year period where, I, uh, where Martin Anstey starts his count from, from after Solomon, but I believe that Solomon's reign was part of the count. Okay, so if we go with that, and the 390 starts at the beginning where, where Solomon come, uh, starts reigning. Then we will, uh, we will this this count then runs. These uh, there it carries on. Okay, uh, it, it, ended, uh, it was 40 after then. So instead of being the first year as suggested by by Martin uh, Reverend Martin Anstey, I believe it's the 41st year. The f first 40 being uh, during the time of Solomon, and we carry on counting down this column here. Um, these, these, all the house of Israel, house of they both existed, yeah. Israel and Judah, Israel and Judah still existed, both of them. Um, there's the then, there's the end of kings of the house of Israel comes to an end in the 300 and the last year was 304, 305 was the end, was the last, it was the first year where there were no more, uh, they, they were no longer, Israel, house of Israel had been dispersed, they were no longer in the land. Okay, but it carries on for some of the reason. If you carry on with that count, um, and the Lord still sees this Judah as part of the house of Israel, uh, and he, and the the, the three ninety then ends here in Joshua. Just a year before he starts to clean up, we see here in two Chronicles thirty four three. This is in his eighth year. He began to seek after the Lord, and he he starts studying, and he and um, here in this year, in, uh, uh, in his twelfth year, he, he starts his it's his destructive religious reformation that he starts. Okay, so there's a there's a gap here from there's his um, 
I said it was in his eighth year. So if you count, it, 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 now the question is whether it's the eighth, this was his eighth year in terms of the actual count, but uh, he was partly in this year. He, he was partly in rain for part of that year. So there's a possibility that we must count that one as well, which would bring his eighth year to here. Anyway, the, he's the, about the time that he started coming to the, and uh, discovering and seeking of the Lord, they found the scroll. They, they were reading the, the, the scroll that had been lost and they found it in the temple and they started studying the word again. That's where the 390 comes to an end. Um, but then, Jeremiah starts prophesying only over here, so we have to start the 40 count over here. So we've got this strange six-year gap you know, between such a count. So if the count of 390 starts with Solomon, when Solomon comes, becomes king, we've got this strange six-month gap, and then starts the count for the, for, the, for the 40. Okay, so I don't know what all of that means, but, and, and I've been... I mean, uh, I've been struggling with this now for, for, for a while until, uh, I don't know, it was about a week ago. Um, the Lord just said, well, go check the days between those dates. You know, So if we go back to Ezekiel, and we see that in chapter 1, we saw that it was in the fifth day of the fourth month, and we saw that, um, what was it, chapter 8, we saw that it was in the uh, first day of the sixth month was the end, okay, a year later. If we go and have a look at that in terms of actual number of days. Now, it's interesting that in this this year, um, if we take uh, the calendar, and I'm going to go to this this calendar. Okay. You can you can go to uh, the, the Hebrew calendar as well and do it on their version. This is, in, this is exactly their calendar. Okay. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to explain to you how I calculate this calendar. I did that in uh, a, a few years ago. I did it in this video. Uh, in this video here, the calendars, the calendars, why? I think it's in this one here. Um, I explained in great detail how um, how I calculate the, the calendar based on the sun, moon, and stars. Okay, so I go into a fair amount of detail explaining all of that. Um, so if you're interested, then... Um, Go and have a look at it over there. Okay. Um, let's just minimize that. So I'm able to calculate, I can recreate the Jews calendar from scratch based on the calculation of the sun, moon, and stars. Uh, if I if I point my start of the year to the to, to the time when when the sun is in Pisces, okay, um, I can recreate their calendar exactly. So I know exactly how they calculate the calendar. Uh, and it's based on when the sun is in Pisces, even though they say that it's based on uh, the, uh, to some extent on the, on the, um, on the equinox. Um, I can, I can tell you now, they don't even, they don't even look at it. They, they base, they, they, they do exactly what I'm doing over here. So, because I, I can build, I can calculate, I can regenerate the calendar for any single, any year in the spreadsheet. So I'm going to do it for, for 2023, okay? Um, that's last year, okay? So yes, 2023, you can go and see this, these, these dates match exactly. So they started the year in the 22nd of March, and you can go and check those dates. They'll be exactly as per the, the, the Hebrew calendar for, for that year, okay? Um, now, if I take... Uh, uh, by the way, this this year, uh, 2023, as it is for them, it was a long year. Okay, remember a lot, they they had an extra month before they started their new year uh, this year. So last year ha was a was a long year, exactly uh, as as we see over here. Based on the sun, moon, and stars, it was supposed to be a long year. That's cool, no problem with that. So we know that the Ezekiel story had to have happened. In a long year, it's one of the stories where we can prove that there is occasionally a 13-month year. Otherwise, you cannot fit the 390 and the 40 into a, a single year. There's no way you can do it. Okay, you have to have a 13th year to fit 390 and the 40 into a because uh, 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 that is a total of 420. There are no years. Where there's where a long a short year is three hundred and fifty four, 
and a long year is 384 days so uh plus we where he started in the fourth month fifth of the fourth month and he ends two months later when you take all of that into account you cannot fit the whole story into a short year you have to have the 13th month okay um you can check that out so if we if we go to and we just use this as a as a basis for calculate of calculating the number of days between the fourth day of uh, the fifth day of the fourth month and the fifth day of the sixth month in a long year okay we can go and see that um so in the in the fourth month uh there's the um fifth day of the fourth month it's the 20 uh, uh 20 23rd of, of july okay um, and then the other date, if we want to go to, uh, we now need to go to the next year. So we have to go to 2024. So it's 23rd of July. And then we need to find the uh, fifth day of the sixth month. There's the sixth month. And the fifth day would be um, 8th September. Okay. So those are the two dates to fit those his those his beginning and end dates, and into that we should fit in. Uh, I should just highlight there was a seven day count and then a three ninety and a forty. Uh, let's just have a look at the seven day, because um, he gets to see this vision on that day on the fifth day of the fourth month, and he describes. I think it's in the next chapter. Uh, where, did, where is it? He says he was. Um, ah, here it is. Yeah. Um, so he gets to get. He gets his instructions, and he says, "I came." Uh, so, so the spirit of the uh, the spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I, and I went in bitterness in the heart of my spirit, and uh, but the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Uh, then I came to them of the captivity at um, Tel Aviv uh, that dwelt by the river uh, Chabar and I sat there where they sat and remained there astonished among them seven days so on the fifth day of the fourth month he's, he gets the vision and then he goes and he sits amongst these the, the guys in captivity uh, for a total of seven days and it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word of, by my mouth and give them warning from me. This is where he's appointed as watchman. Um, and he will then, and he gives them warning. And then he says, And the hand of the Lord was there upon me, and he, and he said to me, Arise and go forth into, into the plain, and I will there walk with thee. And I rose, so that's now, after the seven days, so on the seven, you know, so he gets, remember he said, yeah, after the seven days, he, he gets told to go to, into the plain. So he goes to the plain, he rose and went forth into the plain, and he bowed the glory of the Lord that stood there, and, he's, uh, um, and he describes the, what he saw, okay? And um, this is when he now gets the instructions that are of, of the uh, making the model. So after seven, so you can see, starts on the fifth day of the fourth month, um, count off seven days. On the eighth day, he gets the instructions to make the model, and and then we get told it's you must uh, you must on, be on the left side for three ninety, then on the right side for forty. So so far we've got four hundred and uh, thirty seven days. 7 plus the 390 plus the 40, 437 days in total, okay? Uh, and then the whole story is finished. Ah, but is it really? <laughs> and uh, so let's go and have a look at the actual number of days. So remember 437, let's go and have a look at um, on this calendar year. We said it was the 23rd of July for the one year and the 8th of September. So let's go plug into, let's just use this um, date calculator. Okay, so let's so so let's um, so I've got this thing set up. So let's go and so we want we we know that it's the uh, so this started. Let's just go back there. Uh, 20, 20, uh, 
2023, we, we're going to pick a, a date on the, that's the fourth month, fourth month, fifth day. We want, we want the start of the count to be 23 June. So in this, uh, so in this calculator, if we want the 23 uh, to be the start. We must enter 22 the day before, and I'll show you uh, 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 July. Hang on. Let's, let's go and check that. Uh, sorry, June. June. Uh, we want this date, so we must enter the 22 June, so that this becomes day one. Okay, because we we. This, uh, uh, sorry. Let me just rephrase that. Okay, so let's just pick day one. We've that we've got that date. Okay, right, so let's go and uh, let's go and put that in. Okay, um, so twenty. We wanted to, the twenty third must be the first day, so we have to enter twenty two June here, twenty twenty three, and we want to add. We know it's four hundred thirty seven. Remember, it was seven. Uh, plus the uh, 390 plus the 40 that's 437 okay so let's calculate what date that ends that ends so f 437 days later would be the 22nd as uh, from the 22nd of june so i just want to show you that it, it the 22nd is not included in the count okay even though i entered that date it starts counting it says yeah in the month of june eight days are added so here's the eight from the 23 24 that's two three four five six seven eight the 22nd is not included in the count so there's eight days here 23rd is included okay and it goes forward and the end date the result is 1 september 2024 so let's go to so this next year we have to go to 2024 still on the hebrew calendar okay so 13 month year the last the previous year was a 13 month year and we go to September 1, there, September 1, 2024. It's the 28th day of the fifth month. But we are told that he sat before the elders on the fifth day of the sixth month. And yet, we know about the seven days, we know about the 390, and we know about the 40, which is three, uh, 437 days. When we take 437 days, it goes up to and including the first of September. So where are these other six days? What where is this gap? There's one, two days here, two, three, four, five, six days. Six day gap, and on the fifth day of the sixth month is when you're sitting before the elders. So somewhere in the storyline, there's a six days. Now the question is are these six days did he receive the instructions uh, on that, you know, after seven days and then on the eighth day on the plane, did he receive the instruction and then wait six days before he started so that he ended his uh, 430 days here when he sat before the elders on the uh, um, fifth day of the sixth month? That's one option. Or... Did he finish, in fact, here on the 28th day of the fifth month and then sat around for six days and then on the, on the fifth day of the sixth month he, he now mentions that he's in front of the elders and we don't know what he did for these six, six days. That's the one other option. So it's one six days before, the other one is six days after he finishes. Or the third option is there's six days between the 390 and the 40 days. So he gets his instructions on the eighth day, after the seventh day. He, on the eighth day, he gets his instructions, he immediately starts his 390, he finishes the 390, he waits six days, and then he starts his 40, and he ends his 40 here on the on the on, on that day that's mentioned on the fifth day of the sixth month. So those are the three options that we need to consider. There's no way from scripture that we can tell where those six days were. But there are six days. So we could go back to the chronology and see what we see there. We remember we had this six years. So this six years could be remember in, in the chronology it's days to years. So we had this count here. If you count from when they split, there were six years remaining. After the 390, there were six years remaining, and then the attack happens. Okay? 
So in this instance, it suggests a 390 and then 6. Okay. We've got the 40 happening in parallel to all of that. But in my in the in the count that I'm suggesting that it comes that the count must start with Solomon. Uh, f with Solomon for his, for his 40 and it carries on from Solomon where the 390 ends here and the 40 starts with Jeremiah's prophesying starting that that six, six years is the six days that he is not mentioned in this Ezekiel story so that's where we, I believe that's where it is I believe that the 390 started with Solomon then there was a six day break and then he started with his 40, although it's not actually mentioned in there. So, okay, I, I, I can't prove that. I'm just saying to you, that's what the chronology is showing me. In two instances, this whole thing, now we've got a 390 and a 40 perfectly in series with one another as he is his enactment, ending with a 40 ending exactly just before the destruction, which is exactly the warning. We got the 390, a break of six days, and then the 40 starts, and at the end of the 40 warning, boom, Jerusalem is destroyed. That's exactly what I'm seeing, that there's a six-day gap between the 390 and the 40. So if we take this now to the, to, to, to the, to, to the next level on the calendar, okay, so we looked at the Hebrew calendar, and we can see that... Um, in 2023, let's just go back to 2023, on their calendar last year, on October the 7th, okay, October the 7th, on the 8th day, is when they, they had that really awful attack, okay? But is that where the Lord is counting from? Is this where he's counting the 390 from? And I don't believe it is the case anymore. I really don't. I believe the Lord is counting from here for the Jews and is counting from Feast of New Wine, Pentecost. He's counting from Pentecost for the house of Israel and he's counting from atonement for the Jews. Okay, now I'm going to try and explain to you why I believe that is the case. Okay, so if he's counting, we know that if you just go back into the Exodus story, okay, and you read the Exodus story, and we know that they arrived at Mount Sinai, and they had that Mount Sinai event in the middle of the month, around about the 15th, 16th, 17th, probably, uh, they, they probably arrived here, three days of preparation, and the Lord probably appeared to them on the 17th day of the third month. That's how I believe it actually happened, because they arrived on the self same day that they departed, but in the third month, and they departed on the 15th day of the first month. So they arrived here, sanctified for three days, and the Lord appeared to them on the third, 17th of the third month. I do believe. Okay. Then when you then there was a covenant uh, made and, a, and a, a couple of sacrifices made and all sorts of things. And we're not told exactly when Moses went up to for his 40 days, but he probably went up somewhere in you know, the fifth or 25th or the 26th day of the third month after receiving the law, writing it down, and the sacrifices, uh, he probably, it was probably in this vicinity here, about, probably about 10, 9 or 10 days before he went up. Okay. So if you count off here from here, if you count off 40 days, then the 40 days ends over here. Okay. You can go count it out for yourself. And this is when he, and we know that he, when he returns from his 40 days is when they're worshipping the golden calf. That's why I always I maintain that they worship the golden calf somewhere on the feast on this feast yeah on the ninth or the tenth somewhere around yeah on the ninth or the tenth of the of the of the fifth month is when they worship the golden calf. Okay, this was supposed to be the day when they started their betrothal. So he yeah the covenant was made the wedding covenant was made at Mount Sinai. Moses goes up for more detail, and they were supposed to celebrate, and the wedding, the marriage was supposed to start here. But because they were worshiping the golden calf, the Lord um, uh, threw, threw, them, threw the whole thing out. Moses pleads for them for a few days, and then he goes up for another 40 days, and he comes back. So if you count up for another 40 days, he came back somewhere around here, in the beginning of the seventh month, probably around about Feast of Trumpets, uh, Feast of New Wine, this, this area here is when he came back from his second stint of 40 days. Okay. 
some argue that he came back around atonement. I, I can't see that. I think it was he was here for a while and then they they had the the feast of atonement. But anyway, so that's this date here is a very big date for in terms of what happened for the house of Israel. This is when they were before before the, the the split. This is when they were still the house of Israel. Later on, I do believe that this becomes a more important date for the uh, for Judah, and we'll we'll get into that now. So, if we if the Lord and remember, this is Shabuah, the feast of weeks. Um, so this has got to do with the the uh, Leviticus twenty three count, where we've got uh, seven Sabbaths from from just after Passover and we've had all those debates whether it's from there or whether it's from there whatever but I do believe that it's seven Sabbaths to there and then we've got um, and that's that's the to 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 um, the the new grand end of the barley and then the beginning of the the beginning of of uh, of the wheat harvest uh, culminating here when they start the 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 the, the the wine harvest, but the, the wheat harvest has come to an end around here, and this would be Pentecost. In in everything that I understand, that this is when Pentecost, this is when the Holy Spirit came somewhere in this vicinity. Uh, I do believe this is when uh, at the time of new wine. Um, and there's various reasons why we believe that. In, in the, when they worshipped the golden calf, three thousand were killed, and uh, uh, at the, when the Holy Spirit came, three thousand were saved. So there's so many connections. They were accused of being drunk on new wine. This is when uh, the new wine would have been, the first bit of grapes would have been fermented already by this time. They would have been celebrating a um, feast of new wine, probably at the time of worshipping the golden calf. So, if this is where the Lord is counting from for the house of Israel, well, let's see where that takes us to. Okay. N now I need to show you where I believe there are two calendars at play here. This calendar, the Jews' calendar, is at play, but I believe that the Lord's calendar, which is counted from, uh, is as opposed to from the beginning when the sun is in Pisces, we believe that he's counting from when the sun is in Taurus. Okay, so I've got a different calendar for that, which is which starts. Uh, let's just go to that calendar. I'm going to exp let me expand it to full size for now. So this is 2024. So this would be. When the sun starts in, uh, when the sun is in Taurus, this year, where I thought the year, the year was starting in in May, in, in fact starts yeah in this uh, the the seventh of June, um, for a Taurus start. Okay, so this is where this is the calendar that the Lord is working on. I do believe. Okay. Uh, where the Jews started theirs in, in, if we go to their calendar, they started 2024. They started 2024 on the 9th of April. The Lord starts his year on the 7th of June. So it's two months, two months later, April, May, June, two months later. Okay. I'm now going to bring these two calendars together so that we can compare them side by side. Okay, so let me just move this one into there. All right, so that's uh, 20, both on 2024 and side by side. This is the first, second month. First, second month, there's, uh, so there's start and st start 7 June. June started 9 April, two months earlier. Okay. If we just go down to, let's go down to the fifth month, yeah. Um, so if I say that the Lord is counting for the house of Israel from the time of new wine, the Pent uh, Pentecost, time of new wine, around about the ninth or the tenth of the fifth month, somewhere in that vicinity, he's counting from there, okay. The corresponding month on the Jews calendar, uh, let me just bring them in line. Okay, so we can, so the Lord is counting from the Feast of New Wine on His own calendar, the Taurus calendar, and uh, so the corresponding date for the Feast of New Wine on the Jews calendar would have been uh, around the 13th of August, 23. Let's go change this to the uh, 2023. Sorry, let's just go to 2023 on both calendars for the beginning of the counts. 
2023 for this calendar. So, okay, so we got the Feast of New Wine occurring here around the 24th, 25th of September. And on the Jews calendar, it was the 26th, 27th of July. So if the Lord is counting from here, the 390 days for the house of Israel on his calendar, where would that end? That's the question. So if we take, now I believe that I want the first day to be 25th of September. So I'm going to enter 24th of September. So that day one is 25th of September, the 10th day of the fifth month. Okay. I'm just going to, so that will be the, the first date we, and then we're going to add 390 days to see where, where, where it gets to. So we go to, uh, so it's 24. 9, 23, add, calculate me, comes to 18 October 2024. That's 300. Now, I just want to show you that 24, 9 is not included in the count. Yeah, we've got six days, which, um, sorry, yeah, 24, 9, so six days, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 days. 24th is not included in the actual count. The 25th is the first day. Okay, the last day and including is the 18th. There's 18 days included in October, so that's all 18. So 18th is actually included. So if we go back to our calendars, so if we go, we remember we are on the 23rd here, so I can go 20, uh, 20 24. Uh, so because it's a, uh, let me just show you again. So we were looking at the end date, 18 October 2024. September, October 18, 2024. And that would be the last day of the 39 count. Okay. If the the actual 24th was supposed to be included as well then it would have ended yeah on the 15th day of the fifth month on the lord's calendar otherwise it ends here yeah, on the 16th day of the fifth month um, but i believe that the, the 39 must be complete before we will see remember that it was a warning for the house of israel the warning must be complete there's no point in starting something before the 390 is complete if the escape happens before the end of the 390 then it wasn't a complete warning it must be a complete warning and at best the last day is there or there which means that the warning is complete on that day if we start on the on on on, on the 24th of september the previous year or if you start on the 25th of september the previous, then the, then the completion actually ends on the 17th day of the fifth month um, 19 October would be the first day where you can say the three the warning is complete okay so let's go and have a look what that day looks like on on this on the Jews calendar we go to 2024 20, and on the Jews calendar Octo uh, October 18 August September October just want to bring them in line with each other so, um, so October 18 would be this day here. That would be the end of the 39 day count. And the first day that you can say that the count is complete will be the 19th of October. Saturday, the 19th, the, the warning is complete. And it's the third day of Tabernacles on the Jews calendar. It's the 17th day of the fifth month on the Lord's calendar, but the seventh, but the 17th day of the seventh month on the Jews calendar. I just thought that was interesting that the 17th seven came up, 717 that number we've often so that's where 390 would be complete if the lord was counting from 
the feast of, from, from Pentecost on his calendar would end up in the midst of tabernacles on the Jews' calendar. Okay. Then we said after the 390, there was possibly a six-day break before the 40 starts. So if there was a six-day break, then it would be... Um, so this would be the first of the six. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six-day break, and then the 40 starts. So the 40 starts on this day. So October the, the 25th, which would be just after the day of, 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 of the eighth day on the Jews calendar. And on this, on this, on the, on his, on the Lord's calendar, it would be the 23rd day of the fifth month, um, on his calendar. Okay. So now if we, uh, now we see where will, where will the 40 days, if that is the case, if we have 39 and then a six day break and then uh, the 40 days warning starts, then we can see where it ends. So we must put the 24th of October in as a date so that uh, the 25th becomes day one of the 40. Okay. Um, so let's put that in. So 24, 10, 24, and we must add 40. Remember, we wanted the 25th to be the day one, so we have to enter 24, 10. So the end day would be 3rd of December. You can see that, uh, uh, so this is seven days are included. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The 24th is not included. The 25th is the first day. And the third is including is the last day. So let's go back to the calendars. So we saw December 3. Um, uh, remember December uh, December 3 would be there. That's the end of the 40. That's if there was just six days between. So the end of the 40. And of course, um, that would be the third day of the ninth month on the Jews calendar. And... Um, on the Lord's calendar, it would be December 3, obviously the third day of the seventh month. Let's just bring that together. It's third day of the seventh month on, the, on, on his calendar, but the third day of, uh, of the ninth month on the Jews' calendar, which I thought very interesting. So the 40 days actually ends, on the, as far as the Lord is concerned, on the very day that they're supposed to be celebrating the morning of Gedalia. What he would potentially be the beginning of the attack. Um, or there could be a few days later. So I would say in this vicinity uh, would be the attack, but very likely there. Interesting thing is the 6th of December 2024 is exactly seven years to the day since Trump um, proclaimed Jerusalem to be the capital of Israel. He did so on the 6th of December in, uh, it's just, I think I've got it open. Uh, yeah. So, on, on December 6, 2017, formally recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. So 6 of December plus 7 years would be 20, 6 of December 2024. Um, so that's the stake here. So I just found that very interesting um, in terms of account. Uh, of course, some are going to say to me, but um, on the Jews calendar, or well, that six days doesn't equate to a seven day wedding. Let's just go back to that. Uh, 
Então, tá aqui, ó. Suspend the midline. So, we counted to the 18th of October to be the last day of the 390. Possibly something happening here at the end of the warning. If that happens to be the escape there in the midst of tabernacles, as per John chapter 7, where the Lord arrived in the midst of, uh, of tabernacles. He didn't arrive at the beginning of tabernacles. He arrived in John chapter 7 in the midst of tabernacles. Um, so if that is pointing to something happening in the midst of tabernacles on that particular day, um, then if we if we allow for a seven-day wedding, of course, that, that being day one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven days, that means that the... Uh, 40 days starts not on the 25th of October, but on the 26th, so one day later, so it'll be, uh, so the end of the 40 would come, would actually be on the 4th of December. Um, on the 4th of December would be the end of the 40, and then that allows a few days before the 6th of December, so... Okay, so those are just some interesting counts to, to be aware of that we've got the six days that we need to, I believe we need to take into consideration. The other interesting thing that I just want to point out between these two dates here, um, let's just bring the 5th of the, I want to bring, do it this way. Uh, the 5th of the, the, the let's say the, the 9th, Ninth stroke, tenth of the fifth month. Now we know the temple was destroyed somewhere. We've got one version: the seventh day of the fifth month, and, and two kings twenty-five, and then Jeremiah says tenth, uh, tenth day of the fifth month. So somewhere, somewhere in between, uh, somewhere in this vicinity is the destruction of the temple between those two dates. Okay, you can go check it out for yourself. Those are two dates: seventh and the, of the fifth, and the tenth of the fifth are given. And I cannot tell you why those two different dates are given, but anyway. If we, if we consider that this particular day is mentioned by Jeremiah as a destruction day of the temple, and we, and we find, and we know that the Jews are two months too early, so we must, so that's uh, the fifth month, the tenth day of the fifth month would correspond with the, the tenth day of the seventh month on the Jews' calendar, two months, uh, uh, being, being a two months difference between the two. And this is the Day of Atonement. So we know that this is a really, some bad event, probably fifth day, of, tenth day of the fifth month, bad event, possibly, being 12 October. That's this coming Saturday. Tomorrow's Friday and then Saturday. Possibly a really bad event, 12 October, which would fall on Day of Atonement for the Jews being the 10th day of the 7th month, Day of Atonement, they are observing, they are observe, so in other words, what I'm saying is, the Jews are observing Day of Atonement, but the Lord is observing the 10th day of the 5th month, the very day that the temple was destroyed. So could we see something really bad happening here? I don't believe this escape is going to happen now. I do believe the escape is happening at the, after the 390 is complete, but... As I'm sitting here right now, I would not be surprised if something really bad happens um, on the 10th day of the 5th month on the Lord's calendar, which will coincide with the 10th day of the 7th month on the Jews' calendar. So just watching out for that. All right, guys, I think that, that pretty much covers what I wanted to explain in terms of the Ezekiel um, 390-day and 40-day count and, this, and then this discovery of this extra six days and where it could possibly relate to. So if I'm right, then we, we might be seeing an escape uh, a little bit earlier than our anticipated date at this point. We're looking at, uh, we're looking at 24 October on the 8th day. Uh, I think it's, there's a very strong possibility we might be looking at a, little, a few days earlier. Um, it's not so critical, not so much, uh, it's not so much about which date this happens. It's, uh, it's more about understanding the 390 and the 40 days in, in terms of the end time understanding. Uh, that's that I've been uh, trying to get to the bottom of and I do believe that this uh, extra six days uh, lines up very nicely with the extra with the six years on the chronology 
I hope you guys find that interesting and yeah we'll we just got a few days to go and we'll we'll see exactly how things pan out and if it's still going to be this year um so oh, there's one last thing i just wanted to remind you guys of is that um of course a day of atonement is also um the the end of account uh in other words uh the 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 Shemitah cycle runs from the tenth day of the seventh month to the tenth day of the seventh month. So, in terms of a count of years, so we uh, we we're looking at the end of the seventh year going into the beginning of a new cycle. Uh, on the Jews calendar, that event happens on the on Saturday. Um, we go into on their calendar. We go into the new cycle. Um, of course, on the Lord's calendar, that would be a different date. That would be 10 December, would be going into the new cycle. So, if we have a situation where they, as I, as I believe, they've already turned 70 here in 2023, If they already turned 70 and 23, on, as far as the Lord is concerned here, okay, they turn 70, and like anybody says, once they've turned 70, you ask them how old they are th two months later, you say, I'm 70, and you ask them five months later, how old are you? You say, I'm 70. You ask them seven, eight months later, how old are you? You say, I'm 70. Until the day that they turn 71, you'll say, okay, now I'm 71, okay? It's the same thing here. They turn 70 there, and this whole dung year, they've been 70 until in until they 70 until 10 December, they will turn 71 in the Lord's eyes. But we know they cannot see 71. They must be out of the land before 71. And that is another reason why they will be out of the land there, before they turn 71. Somewhere between, in between 3 and 6 December, they will be out of the land just before they turn 71 in God's eyes. And the scripture is still held true. Dung year was the year that they were 70, going towards 71, but not yet 71. And they will be out of the land before they reach at 71. That's the way I see it. Just something, just just something to to think about in terms of the, so in in terms of in God's eyes, from eleven December onwards, we are now in the first year of the new cycle, first day of the of the new new cycle count. The Jews will be saying, of course, on the thirteenth, twelfth, or thirteenth, they'll be in the new cycle. So it was, it'll be interesting to see how these things pan out. So if the forty days actually ends, as we counted over there. And, um, yeah, tribulation starts somewhere in this region. Somewhere in this region. Might even take three days, and then boom, tribulation. Attack on Jerusalem for three days, then boom, tribulation starts. Okay, there's just some things to think about. We'll see how it all pans out. Thanks very much for listening. I hope it blesses you, and may the Lord keep you and bless you, and until we get together, good night.